This is the little 659 crankcases going back together. Before you put the crankcases back together, just make sure you have everything that you need on hand. Everything's been done. You've, if you've had all the bearings out, make sure your bearing retainers are back in. If you had any plugs out that are internal, there's a, an oil gallery plug here that's for the drilling for the feed from the oil pump outlet. But I didn't pull that out. If you're having the cases sandblasted or any sort of media blasted, you'd definitely pull that out. There is one on the front here that I did pull out that goes through to the uh, uh, to the primary drive cover. There are sometimes O-rings between the cases, and the best way to work that out is to just look for an O-ring cavity. And on the left-hand case, there's an O-ring cavity there. And that's that one, and that's the oil feed out of the pump into the left-hand case, up around the main bearing and squirting out the top here to lubricate the piston. Uh, that's the bearing retainer plate on this side. And apart from that, I think that's all that needs to go in before we put it together. In terms of things that have to go inside the cases, there's the crankshaft, number one, which is here it's a plastic bag from last week still. It's all the gearbox shafts here, input shaft, output shaft, shift forks, shift drum, as a timing shaft. So just lay everything out that you need before you go, get all your shims where you need them to be. So this way you've got a better chance of not forgetting anything. There's a couple of things to be wary of. Well, the main thing to be wary of, in my opinion, is the orientation of the conrods. The rod that is closest to the right-hand side goes out the horizontal. The rod that is closest to the left-hand side, or the top, when I drop the crank in, goes to the vertical. Because if they're in the wrong place, you can't put the cylinders on. Uh, ask me how I know. I did forget to put shift forks in one once, but you work that out pretty quick. So the first thing I'm going to do is all these holes are threaded. Some of them have had the case bolts in when I've been shimming, but I'm going to run a little bit of oil into every hole. So the threads are lubricated. And then once we've done this, I'm going to clean the surface off and put the goop on. Usually I try and give the goop about 10 or so minutes to go off. There are two threads in this case as well, next to the vertical cylinder. So put a bit of oil in there as well. Now, get a rag and give the surface a good clean. These surfaces you can see have a, a almost knurled finish on them. I'm not sure when that started, maybe about 2007 or 2008 they started doing that. Previously this surface is all just smooth like this surface here. But this was there. I guess a solution to a problem that didn't really exist, as they seem to do quite a bit. I don't think I've seen an engine leak X factory through the externals of the crankcases since I think we did one in 2002, maybe, but that'd be only one or two I've ever seen. So now that's clean, I'm going to goop it up. For goop, I'm using the 3Bond 1215, which is just the grey 3Bond. Sometimes it comes out clear. I like to mix it up a little bit if I can, sometimes in the tube. If not, I squirt it onto a piece of cardboard or something. 
and mix it all around and then use it from there. Usually it's only the bit right at the nozzle that does that. I don't understand why, but it's fairly common. Oops, my tube's getting holes in it now from the kneading. Okay, I'll see if that worked. Mm, somewhat. Let's get the first bit out and make sure it's all mixed. And I usually use a dab method. Put it on and just dab. And you will use quite a lot of it as you make the full trip around the ceiling surfaces. It does splooge out the edges. So I just dab, 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 dab. And that tends to spread it out fairly well. We'll also get into the bolt holes to some extent, it's not a big deal. Now you just keep dabbing away and make sure it's all covered, covered, not drowning. You get a feel for it over time. I guess the knurled pattern does help retain the sealant, but it wasn't ever really an issue. Get a fair bit there. Spread it around a bit. Not sure what the movie next door is. Now, sometimes in the manuals, I had a look earlier, it said put some sealant around this. This is the shroud, and inside there is the oil pickup strainer, which I don't know that it really needs to be sealed, but we'll put a bit on there. Keep them happy. Okay. So now we've got about 10 or so minutes before it really starts to skin up a little bit to get everything in. Got my hands covered in sealant. Okay, so start dropping shafts in. At this point I usually start greasing, th uh, start oiling things as well. There's no reason to not oil things. <clears throat> so we'll leave that till later. If you put the gear shafts in first, one thing to be aware of when you're putting them in is sometimes the barrel rollers can sort of cock in their little cage and poke out a bit and the shaft might stop. So if the shaft stops, don't force it. Have a look, see what's happening. Let's put the 
shafts together and I should just drop in. So there's shift forks. when you start putting oil on things as they get slippery they can make them hard to hang on to I'm trying to get them into a position that you can't see drum and make sure that as it goes in you reach underneath and just slide the detent across okay drum in shift forks across and in the hole and to move the shift forks around a bit to get them shift the drum move the drum around maybe the forks where you need them to be Now all a bit slippery. Hmm. Okay. Crank show. So you've got the crank shim, this one only one side. <clears throat> and the rods, make sure they're poking out the right holes. Getting that wrong was a real doozy. Stay there. And the timing shaft. Usually give the, the bearing and the seal surface a bit of a spin in the lathe before I put them together. Not sure if it actually does anything or just make me feel better. Now, the left hand side, I'll just give it a quick down. How's the time going? It's only been about five minutes. Make sure the dowels, these are the alignment dowels here. Make sure they're in their position. So we need to put our o-ring in before we get too carried away. Get some oil on some of those. I generally don't put any seals, external seals in, like the output shaft seal or the timing shaft seal in here until it's all together. It's a bit more stable that way. And you don't have seals dragging on shafts when you're just trying to assess everything's nice. Now, I might throw the other side on now. I was looking in the manual before, just checking, uh, and I happened to see in the crankcase reassembly, I did a little bit about shimming, and it said the 
crank shimming between 0.15 and 0.2, which is, I hadn't really actually seen that in a, that was a 696 ABS manual. Uh, I hadn't seen them sort of reduce the spec like that before, but there you go. Put some oil on the gearbox shafts. There we go, and in the grooves where the shift forks are on. And the grooves. A bit of a mess coming out the bottom, but that's no big deal. Okay. It's my O-ring, which has been greased up. So I'll <clears throat> pop the O-ring in there, and the grease should hold it in position. We'll check that as we go over. And then... We just drop it on. Hopefully, it all just slides down happily. I'm sure, our O ring is still where I left it. And I don't think it is. Okie dokie. Top off. Yep, O ring's in the bottom. I might use a little more grease. So if some more grease holds the O-ring in position this time. Still in position. Give it a push. And there we go. And the O-ring is still where it needs to be. And that's crankcase down. Just wondering. Something's wrong with my gear shelves. This doesn't feel right for some reason. I'm not sure what I've done here. Something isn't right. There we go. Not sure what was wrong with it before, but it just didn't feel right. Don't be afraid to pull it apart. If it doesn't feel right, pull it apart. Don't put it together and then try and work out what's wrong with it. <clears throat> Do that before you've bolted it all up. still in place. Yep. There we go. Rods are in the right place. Look in the middle. I did assemble an ST2 a while ago and for some reason after I'd put the cases together I then decided to put the cylinders on. Usually I'd build the sides up which was lucky because when I went to put a cylinder on I realized the rod was off to the wrong side because I had the rods in the wrong spot. It was just lucky. So on these there's three internal screws from this side, and two external.
you should see some of the sealant sort of come out the sides when you put those bolts in. We'll torque those up to 25 Newton meters. Got these ones tight. I'll spin it over and do the ones on the other side. Down goes the timing shaft. You can see here the position for the timing shaft seal, which is the only external seal on this side. And this is the detent, the gear position detent I was talking about, just to make sure that's out of the way, because it's sprung, it sort of sits over here without the shift drum in, so you push it across, drop your shift drum in. Okay. What I would normally do now I usually try and keep my hands away from the centre line where the scoop is because I hate getting goop all over my hands. The goop does squeeze out, but if you let it go dry, you can then just brush it off and it brushes off really easily. And that's how I like to get rid of it. There's no point trying to clean it off now because it smears and just makes a mess. <clears throat> These are my external Six millimeter screws. A couple of internal ones in here. And there's the screw here that goes inside the starter pinion stud. That was quite possibly Loctite, I might Loctite that one in. I don't Loctite many things inside the engines, but Loctite that in. I also Loctite the bearing retaining screws in. Just out of paranoia. You don't need to pull it apart to replace them. And these go to 10 Newton meters. Okay, so crank is fairly firm, gear shafts turn, timing shaft turns, it's actually stayed where it's meant to be. I'll just stand it up, that's what I usually do, and just run through all the gears to make sure that the gearbox works. Because you don't need to let all the sealant go dry 
and then decide you want to pull the gearbox out. Usually use an elastic band between the input shaft and the <coughs> crank just to put some load on the shafts. And then run through the positions first, second, third, fourth, fifth, and sixth. So they're all there. Fifth, fourth, third, second, neutral, first. Lovely. So that's crankcase halves assembled and all the required bolts in, torqued up. Uh, I'll let it sit now for the sealant to go off, then I'll wipe the bit of sealant off the edge to get rid of it. Um, there's a bit of sealant out in the middle here, I might wipe that out now. That way later it doesn't fall off and in. That's going hard as a little string. And off the base gasket face. Group on the rod. Okay, and put a bit of a bit more oil down into the rods. There we go. And I think that's it for now.